Happy Thursday, guys, and welcome back to Bleacher Report's E-Stream. I'm Michelle Morrow. I'm Malik Forte, and today we'll be discussing former World of Warcraft designer Rob Pardo's new company, Bonfire Studios, and how that might impact the world of esports. We also had a chance to check out Guild Wars 2 at PAX and get their details on the upcoming World Championship. So let's do this. I'm ready. Former World of Warcraft lead designer Rob Pardo has decided to start his own company. He, with the help of a few ex-Blizzard employees and former Nexon executive Mean Kim, has founded Bonfire Studios. Oh, I'm so excited for this. They've yeah. already received $25 million in investments, and uh, it's from Riot Games. And uh, former EA executive John Riccatello, just to name a few. So the crazy part is that they're getting all this money, and they haven't uh, told us what their concept for a game idea is going to be yet. they got to have one, though. They you definitely got to have one. got to have a game idea. <laughs> uh, now, if you guys didn't know, Rob Pardo is a big name in the business and was an integral part of Blizzard's success. He was gone for a couple of years, but now he started his own studio because he liked how a small team can create a very successful game like Hearthstone. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Michelle, I got to know, what are your thoughts on this right now? This is a crazy Blizzard week. Um, yeah, this is been. There's been a lot of news that have come out, um, one being that Chris Metzen retired. Yeah. Um, and he's like the heart oh, of Blizzard. Yes. This is He is the heart. He's the war chief. He's so, the heart. He really is. Um, so Rob Pardo left the company a few years ago and is now starting uh, Bonfire. And I think it sounds amazing because he has some really great talent. Min Kim is amazing. Yeah. Um, and then he also Nick Carpenter left the company and he's right. the head of cinematics and he's amazingly talented. Um, you have also Josh Mascara who uh, was the game designer for Diablo 3. Right. Um, Reaper of Souls. Right, so yeah, he, yeah. like all those guys are so so talented. I cannot wait to figure out like what game, what kind of game they're coming out with, what's going to go on, but I would say as far as it relates to Blizzard in particular, it's going to be very interesting to see after losing some of those big titans yeah. inside of there. A lot of right. those super creative, excellent guys that you can really count on. Exactly. And don't you think it's kind of weird that with all of these departures, they're being funded by Riot. Yeah. This is a, a huge Blizzard competitor. Yeah. You know, it, it's got to make you think, like, what could they possibly be doing? They got to be aiming for, like, something that Blizzard's been doing because that's kind of like the culture of this scene. Yeah. You know, people make competitive games and they kind of take inspiration from each other. So, well, what a, one of the things that they said that they're definitely going to be making an online multiplayer game. Okay. So, there we have that, mm. but we know it's a small team. So, it would be really hard to just be like, here's an MMO. Yeah. Um, they couldn't out of make nowhere. their, like, oh, Riot's version of Overwatch. It couldn't, that no. take a a lot of resources I mean, it would, do. it would, it would. And who knows how many resources they're actually going to have. I mean, because they said they're going to keep it small like a Hearthstone team, that makes me think it'd be a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, and I feel as if because they do love Blizzard and they do love the games and the worlds that they've all created, I mean, Pardo and Metzen especially, Metzen's not a part of Bonfire, but just saying, like, th- these are the kind of games and worlds these guys created. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine that they would go directly into competition with Blizzard, yeah. um, even though Pardo's been gone for a few years. Something that we talked about I think would be kind of awesome would be a fighting game. A fighting game, yeah. Because it's one of the things that Blizzard does not do. Right. Well, you know, Riot picked up uh, Rising Thunder, which Mm -hmm. was a Seth Killian's game, and that studio. So I I automatically thought they were going to be working on a fighting game anyway. So it it would only make sense that they did make one. Also, Also, what if they get into the card battle game business, too? There's a chance that they could do that. He said he's plainly said that he liked, you know, the small team when they were developing Hearthstone, yeah. so I mean, what would stop them from making another Hearthstone? There, so there's the so many The only thing that would, s- would stop them is is just the, because of the love that he has for that specific team. Gotcha, yeah. Um, that would be the only thing I could see stopping it, but saying that, I think that the most important thing to Bonfire and Pardo and Carpenter and Josh Mascara and Kim is that they want to make a good game. Yeah. Like, those guys are all about making good games. Totally. So, should, I see that. They should just, like, buy deckbound heroes and fix that. That'd be cool if they did that. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What type of online competitive game do you guys think Bonfire Studios should create? Let us know at BR underscore Eastream. All right. Now, the Guild Wars 2 World Championships are taking place this Saturday, and we got to meet up with them at PAX. So, check it out. What's up, guys? Malik back at you, checking out some Guild Wars. I'm here with Josh, the brand manager. So tell me, what have you guys been showing off here? Uh, so we're prepping for Living World Episode 2 for Season 3, and uh, today we're showing off that episode and a new PvP map we've got in the works. Excellent, excellent. All right, so let's start off with Heart of 
Thorns. What would you say the feedback's been like up until now? Uh, so I think it was really good initially. Uh, there was definitely some places we can improve though, and so we actually dedicated uh, an entire build after the expansion came out, just kind of focusing on uh, on our fans' feedback and kind of iterating and making sure that we're delivering a product they all wanted. And I think uh, we're netted out as we're exactly what fans are looking for. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, so moving along, uh, let's go to in, right into the esports thing because that's kind of the that's kind of the big stuff right now. Uh, Guild Awards World Championships are happening on September seventeenth. Two hundred K on the line, uh, what kind of led to this tournament and what have you guys learned, you know, getting more involved into esports? Man, it's been a crazy year. So we started doing this in October last year just before Heart of Thorns uh, was released and uh, the amount of lessons that we've learned in that period of time has just been insane. Uh, you know, from the way that we deal with the community, the way that we deal with class balance, the way that we deal with map balance, uh, it's just been a huge journey and uh, we've got some great partners that we're working with. We've been working with Twitch, we've been working with ESL. I mean, having great partners like them has really helped us kind of expedite the process. Right. You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of good talent out there. Have these, been, have these been like broadcasts that you guys have been taking like some, some pointers from? Uh, in terms of other games? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm a huge esports fan. Like, I've been watching these things for, for years and years. Uh, probably my favorite ones to watch right now is probably CSGO. It's oh, yeah. kind of got like a homegrown feel to it. It's starting mm -hmm. to get a bit more professionalized now with uh, some of the bigger leagues coming in. Uh, but, you know, seeing the way that it's trended from the beginning where it was kind of a little bit of a rough start all the way to where it is now has just been an amazing journey. Yeah, I, we were talking earlier and you, you, you made mention of Guild Wars 1 and how that kind of was like integral in, in starting that. So, I mean, what, what has changed over time for you guys uh, since Guild Wars 1 as far as esports goes? Ah, man, literally everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, our approach on the game has changed considerably. I mean, Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 are completely different beasts. Right. Uh, you know, we were doing competitive gaming before people really knew what competitive gaming was. Like, the first tournaments we ran were not even broadcasted. Uh, these were things that would happen and then you'd hear about them on a blog somewhere. Uh, and so, like, the entire landscape has changed dramatically over the past 10. I mean, even with the past five years, it, everything's changed completely. Uh, the way that we approached things two years ago was much more of like a homegrown, uh, kind of just doing it. It was more of like a kind of an afterthought, but now it's becoming much more... Uh, you know, this is a real thing now. It's kind of crazy to, wait, to see how things have developed the past couple years. Excellent. Excellent. So, with the World Championships coming up, uh, what are some teams that we should be keeping an eye out for to win this thing? Uh, probably the big one's going to be Denali Esports. Uh, they took first place in Season 2 Pro League Finals, uh, but they took third seed for EU in the qualifier. So, people were a little surprised to see them dethroned a little bit, but, you know, uh, I, I, I think they're going to do really, really well. So, the final event for the World Championship will be at the ESL Studio in Burbank. And we'll have all six teams out there, so all 30 guys. Cool, cool. And we can check this out on Twitch.tv? Yep, twitch.tv slash Guild Wars 2 on uh, September 17th, starting at 10 a.m. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank you very much, you guys. ESL Studios in Burbank, uh, the World Championship for Guild Wars, coming at you September 17th. Professional Guild Wars 2, that's one you don't hear much about these no, days. No, you really yeah. don't. I yeah. mean, okay. like uh, from the MMO scene, like the, the one you really hear about the most would be World of Warcraft. Right. Yeah. Um, even then, like the arena scene for World of Warcraft is not it, as It big. feels like it's kind of diminishing over over time, it seems like. Yeah. You know, hopefully this year we, we see a blitz kind of being big, but going back to Guild yeah. Wars 2, I feel like this is something that can catch on. It can catch on a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, the thing about it is like Guild Wars, in Guild Wars, people love their characters. They've right. spent a lot of time and energy and years playing these characters. So to have this is, is a great thing for the yeah. people who really have put a lot of time and energy into them. Right. Also, I like that they just focus on their community. They really don't care about getting too big. You know, they right. just, they're just worried about the people who play the game. And that's how it should be. You should just totally. focus on your community and stop trying to be all these other guys. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're Guild Wars and they're doing a great job. Right, right. Indeed, indeed. Anyways, uh, that's a wrap, guys. If you want more eStream and eSports news, download Bleacher Report's Team Stream app on your phone and select which specific sports, teams, and eSports titles <laughs> you want to follow and get updates on. And be sure to follow us on the grams and the tweets at VR underscore eStream. See our cool posts. They're all right. Come see us.